in this series of Polaroid photographs, the one that we're looking at specifically is Diana. And the way that her image is fragmented into different details is so interesting for me, especially in relation to the way we were just talking about this direct gaze of the participant. How does the way that her, her image and her, herself to a certain extent is fragmented into different parts and details change the way her, her image is offered to the viewer for interpretation? I think you pointed out something that's really noticeable in that in a lot of Bay's other work, specifically his portrait work, the gaze of his subject is very obvious. It's very, it's the first thing that you notice in most of his images. Um, whereas with Diana, there's no, her gaze is never directed at you. You see different images of her face, different facets um, of that area, but you never receive this con confrontational front on gaze that is somewhat typical of Bay's work. Um, and in that, you kind of have to craft her identity for yourself in some ways. Um, we see her in a neatly pressed school uniform, calling on those traditions of respectability that we see early on in Harlem and his work. Um, and we also see her wearing this necklace um, that says her name. So the only way we get a feeling of her is from kind of the environment that she's around. Part of this is that Bayes moved from being outside, being with the people. So we're in a studio and we don't have that background anymore to tell us who she is. She's on a blue, neatly pressed background, which Bay refers to as a romantic rendering um, of people who saw him get that attention. He wanted to give them studio portraits that elevated um, their positionality and, and made them look um, as appealing as, as they can be and as they are. And so Diana is turned away. She's seen protecting her ears in some of these images, and she's continually fragmented. And so it, it makes me think of how Bay said with this series, he was creating an image of American youth culture. He wanted a collective portrait of what children looked like during the 90s and, and the things that they go through. And the way that Diana is turned away from us um, signals to me that the separation and the fragmentation of her body could represent the several constraints, several different constraints that she potentially goes through as a part of American youth culture. Whether those are familial, whether they're social, economic, whether it's simply today, the day that she came into the studio, she wasn't serving energy that was confrontational or direct. She was serving energy that was potentially what we see within the image. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think in that, Bay is trying to create this work that is typical of the American culture, of the American youth culture, um, even if those aspects aren't necessarily lovely um, and, and what we're necessarily used to for him. So we've talked a bit about youth, specifically with Diana, um, and Bay has called youth the arbiters of style. What collaborative narrative do you think Bay and his subjects are working with within class pictures? That's a great question. And I, when I think about class pictures, there's one particular photograph to me that screams style. When I think about style, I think of a, a sense of, of independence or an independence of thought, an independence of dress. Um, and there was one photograph of a young man named Kevin whose environment, his dress, and his posture created this perfect, this, I want to call it a perfect storm of subversion against like, because it, since it was, the, the series is called class pictures. These are pictures of youth in an institution of learning where there's a certain set of rules, there's a certain way the space is filled out, there's a certain way that you're expected to act. When I think about youth as the arbiters of style, I think about Kevin because his style comes through so much in the way that he's in the way that he's being subversive. Like he's he's wearing a full zip sweatshirt that says FC and UK on the other side. <laughs> That's like this curse or this four letter word that obviously isn't allowed in a school environment. Um, but since it doesn't directly spell that out, he's pushing the boundaries by by even wearing that in the classroom. And his pose, his posture is almost, it's like mildly aggressing the camera, almost in the way that you would take a picture of like a hip hop mogul or a rapper, you know, for an album cover. But when you look in the back, you see like the, the chalkboard or the whiteboard in this, this classroom environment. And the other thing that's so 
potent about class pictures for me is that Dawood Bay makes the decision to include personal captions um, of the subjects using their own words, talking about their own lives. Um, and Kevin's has a lot to offer. I won't try to tell his story, but the what, what marks his story for me is this, this sense of having to be fiercely independent, not necessarily because he wants to, but because he has to. Um, and because he has to, finding a way to make it worthwhile or finding a way to make it enjoyable or to make it uniquely Kevin. Um, so in that way, the youth as arbiters of style for me, and I, and I, I could, or you could argue for Dawood Bay, is about the capacity to express independence of thought or to, to be different or to be subversive or to, to do something that hasn't necessarily been done before. Not always because you want to, but sometimes because that's your lot in life, but making it uniquely your own, really taking ownership. And I love class pictures for that. I love Kevin for that. It's an absolutely wonderful series. And I think also the Superman hat that he wears. Yes. I think it's Kevin in Superman letters. Yes. Also supports that idea of him being this fiercely independent, um, vibrantly there human being. I think that's an awesome detail as well that points to everything that we've included. I completely agree. And I, I think the other thing that I missed about Kevin that I that makes him so important to me or his portrait so important to me is because in, during in-class pictures, Dawood Bay went to different students at different institutions, some public, some private, different positions geographically, socioeconomically, etc. Kevin happened to be a young black male in this predominantly white private school. So for him to be, to, to declare himself Superman, to wear this subversive sweatshirt, to have this pose and like incredible quality about him, it sparkles and it comes through even more powerfully for me because I, that his, his upbringing in that environment resonates with me personally, but it also speaks to how when there are forces around you that are trying to get you to conform or that are trying to get you to repress certain aspects of yourself, sometimes they push through even harder. And Kevin's a great example of that. 